Good morning, it's Kimberly. On today's episode, we'll be all about prepping our road and driveway. It'll be a little longer than my normal videos, but I hope you enjoy it. It was a lot to get done. This first section of the video is prepping the driveway. We're gonna prep it for some road mix or some pit run, maybe a little bit of both. Sean is hopping on the tractor this morning and just kind of grading it out a little bit for the truck to come down to deliver the rock to us. So this is just a little short video of him doing that project this morning. Some of you are wondering how we get these shots from the tractor. So this is a little every morning prep for Sean to put the GoPro on the tractor to get the tractor shots. He's not actually driving and holding the camera. It is mounted to the top of the tractor. So we have a neighbor whose father owns a construction company, so they are driving this dozer for us to help us push 40 years of tumbleweeds and rock and mud out of the way so that we can put down the pit run and the um, road mix for our road that we will eventually build one day. But for right now, we're just trying to get it widened out, cleared off and level and the potholes filled so that we can drive our everyday drivers down the road as well as have extra space for deliveries and that kind of thing. This property has only ever had cattle on it, so you'll, you'll see Sean taking some barbed wire and rolling it up and taking it and transferring it to a post frame that we will eventually restring that barbed wire to separate the property from the neighbors just because we have open range laws out here in Idaho. So land across the street right in front of the tractor that you can see that's the north side of our property that's a hundred acres plus of BLM land so with open range laws they're allowed to put the animals on there if they don't have to fence it in you as a resident has to fence in your yard to keep the animals out of your yard so our property is completely fenced in As we pull out on the shared roadway of our private drive, you can tell that we are going past our property. So we're trying to be good neighbors and good stewards. We're actually gonna go um, two pieces of property over from us, which is about 80 acres or so, go up and over to the east of us. And then we will go all the way to the end of the road to what we affectionately called the big house which is the original house that was put in in the 70s and we will do the road all the way to that house and back to ours just because that neighbor is only there one month out of the year and then the neighbor that lives next to them they are um, older than us and don't have the equipment to do it so we're just trying to be good stewards of the property so we're just trying to make not everyone happy but everyone happy uh, and be able to drive safely down the road. We've learned a great deal in this process of going in this property. So to build a road, you kind of have to have basically two lanes, a come and a go lane. We only have a, a one lane, but we're trying to widen it as we go. What we're doing here is super widen it to clear it all off to use some of the debris on the right hand side of the road or the north hand side to fill in the current lane that we have. It's not a straight lane like we would prefer. However, we're dealing with what we have currently and we'll fix it as we go down. However, you need a crown in the middle of the road so that the water drains off of it properly. So that's what he's doing in the dozer is he's moving the land and shifting the dirt around to put a crown down the middle. A crown meaning like a bump, like a tiny speed bump. 
so that the water will go either to the left and drain off or to the right and drain off. And that's how you prevent from having potholes in the road is because it's not got a proper crown in it or a proper drain place for it to go so that it just pools there. And as it pools there and you constantly drive over it, the smacking of the water displaces the rock that's in it, which causes a pothole to create. So it's a lot, like I've said, it is a long, long process. This whole process took us about a week to do. So I'm trying to put it all into one video versus breaking it up. So thanks for sticking with me. So for me, it was hard to understand what 20 acres really looked like, especially since our property is bare and there's no markings. So basically where you see the tumbleweeds is all a fence line. So we did have our property surveyed. So we are 1,660 feet wide and we are 1,300 plus feet long. So we're basically a rectangle shape, not a square shape and we run north to south for our property line. We are 660, so our driveway off of the main road will be halfway on each side, so straight down the middle. You'll also see various uh, bird's eye view. There is a hump or a lump of dirt mound that goes down almost the middle. It was only off by probably 10 or so, maybe 20 feet at the most in some places that marked the middle of the property. So I think that they did that when they put the cattle on the property to kind of help separate or give them something to lay on or perch up on because our neighbor has cattle down the road and he did the same thing with rocks and they do like to stand on top of it and look over at things. So it was strategic, but it wasn't quite down the middle of our property. So as you can see from this bird's eye view that we do have quite the accumulation of tumbleweeds. So with that, during the summer, we burn them off. There's no other way to get rid of them. There are just so many of them. So we let them collect on the fence and then we hook up a water buffalo that's like 350 gallons or 300 gallons uh, on a trailer with a hose and Sean will go down and burn them with a torch and then I come behind them and spray it down so that we have no hot spots or anything like that. So just to let you know that yes, these are all tumbleweeds and they do accumulate all winter long and then we burn them off in the spring summertime. So we have a, a few days where we burn them off, but it can't be windy. It can't be inclement weather. So the weather dictates when we burn them off.
We are extremely pleased with the progression that we're making out on our property. I know that when we live so far away from family that you guys are always asking us what we're doing, how's it going. So this is just a little clip of an update. So it's coming from the southwest corner of our property and panning up to the front. And then Sean just kind of shows you where we're kind of at in the road progress and then on our property. So our tractor shed and then our tent concoction that we came up with to secure the RV from the wind. We did fix that one post that bent and then our shipping container with our trailer with our water uh, buffalo on it and then all of our implements for the tractor just sitting out. So just a little update on where we're sitting as far as property goes. Some things I'm not going to be able to show you because Sean works full-time job, I work full-time job, and sometimes he does projects while I'm at work because you all know he works second shift, I work day shift. So like the solar panels on the back of the RV that we built, um, there's not a video for that because he did that while I was at work and didn't record it. So we will try and get better at recording things when the other person's not around, but like I said, it is really hard to set a camera on a tripod because it is so windy out here but we will update you as we can In this updated video for the road, you can see that we've had another storm overnight and the winds brought in even more tumbleweeds. So we're still kind of fighting the weather to get the road done. But as you can see that we have way more tumbleweeds now than we did a couple days ago when we were working on the project. Also, you'll see that Sean stops the drone at the bend in the road because we're trying to keep the privacy of our neighbors uh, off the internet because sometimes people don't like their information shared. So um, we just stop it and turn it around there. Although we did go all the way up that roadway to the neighbor's house. Um, it's just a work in progress. Also at the end of this little clip when it's, it's setting out over the sun, you can just see the property. That's the BLM land that we relocate all of our snakes to. So we're very familiar with what habitat that is over there. Here's just a few pictures of tumbleweed up close so you can see how they latch onto each other and become one big tumbleweed. These are just some progress shots to show you still frames of the actual road work that's being done and the rocks that have to be moved out of the way, that kind of thing. This is our 1980 Chevy dump truck that we went and purchased on the Oregon border. That was an all day event. It is a six split. Uh, you'll have to Google that because that's very interesting. Um, 
pickup truck to drive. So I would highly recommend you Google it. I'll try and get a video of Sean actually driving it. Uh, I've never seen anything like it, but it's a really cool machine. She does run great. She has a little bit of a leak uh, in her for the brake fluid, I do believe. But other than that, we pretty much weigh her down anyway with rocks and things, but she's been a great help for helping me drive over the road and pack it down because she's basically the, the heaviest piece of equipment that we have. This hyperspeed video is just the guys laying down the dirt uh, for our actual driveway that comes off of our private drive to make it a little easier for our daily drivers. So we brought the dozer up onto the actual property to clear where the uh, house will be built just because it had that big boom of dirt that went straight down the middle of the piece of property as well. So just to help us out in the long run when we get ready to actually build the house, um, it just helps to have a big piece of equipment to push all of that around with.
as you can see when you're the project manager or the contractor of the day basically and doing all the work yourselves your work stops when other people deliver things to your property so sean was helping to smooth out that uh, pathway and then we got our rock delivery and our pit run delivery for the road so he has to stop doing what he's doing forward progress to assist them in what they need to do little last clip of the dozer sitting there it looks like it's just sitting there but I just wanted to show you in real time how fast this dozer moves so that you can realize how long it took us to do this project thanks for watching see you next time Hit the like button, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you'll know when we post our next video.